Welcome to the new world of animal allies. The doctors, volunteers, pet owners and other surprising visitors who are out there making a difference. In Animal Doctors, a team of cardiothoracic surgeons perform pioneering heart surgery on a baby orangutan. While in India, animal helpers rescue some overworked elephants. This week's how-to has some practical advice on alternative healing. And in southern Turkey, a group of rare seals make a special appearance. How much do you have to shave tomorrow? Uh, probably for old. Karen, the baby orangutan, is being prepared for a pioneering operation. Her short life hasn't been easy. Her mother rejected her at birth, possibly because of her illness, and she was hand-raised by the keepers here at San Diego Zoo. Karen has a hole in her heart, and without surgery she won't live long, so she's being prepared for a major operation. Dr. Donald Jansen, the Director of Veterinary Services at San Diego Zoo, explains what's going to happen. It is a very unusual procedure to, uh, for, for uh, uh, any animals that, that we deal with for this to be done, mostly because it takes such a vast amount of equipment and expertise to pull it off. Uh, this is open heart surgery, and this is actually bypassing the heart and lungs using a, a, a heart and lung machine or a bypass machine. A group of the world's top heart and lung specialists have gathered together to save her life. This is the first and only open heart surgery performed on an orangutan, and the surgeons are using the same procedure and equipment they would use on a human. Cardiothoracic surgeon Dr. Stuart Jameson is leading the team. We've set it up to do the surgery exactly as we would in a baby, and I think that's safest. We have some very uh, high-powered help here. Um, the anesthesiology, the nursing, the perfusionists, the surgeons, uh, that same group of people could truly do any type of heart surgery in the world. Though quite common today, open heart surgery is still an extremely delicate procedure. Performing it on an animal makes it even more complicated. Most humans would only be on the operating table for four hours. This operation will take more than seven. Inside her chest, Karen's heart beats furiously. But in order to sew a patch over the large hole, they'll have to stop the heart altogether. Put it here on the inside. Uh, Karen's so body is technically dead, uh, even though her brain is still connected to a blood supply. This is provided by the mechanical heart and lung machines in the operating room. It's the only thing keeping her alive but someone had to supply all the extra blood that was needed. One of the most difficult problems that we had was uh, to find blood for a blood transfusion, and we used a volunteer orangutan for that. The surgeons use a saline solution to wash away the blood so they can see where to place the patch. The patch is carefully sewn over the hole. They're generally made from pieces of the pericardium sac that the heart sits in. is firmly in place and Karen's broken heart is now fixed. Electrodes are put inside her chest and a small electric shock is used to jumpstart her heart again. Then special metal clips rather than stitches are used to sew her up. 
Now the only thing left for the team to do is to wait anxiously and see if the operation has been a success. And in Animal Doctors Part 2, Karen's recovery continues. The Asian elephant doesn't look like the sort of animal that would be in danger. But it is seriously in danger. Their main problem is that their environment is shrinking rapidly. The rainforests are being destroyed, rendering the already shrinking population homeless. Many of the remaining elephants are domesticated and put to work. The conditions are generally extremely harsh and many perish as a result. Chandrika and Damini, both females, and Raja, a young male, are three Asian elephants that are escaping to a new, more sedate life. They're on their way to Woburn Safari Park in Bedfordshire, England. Woburn is renowned for its conservation work and over the 30 years it has been operating it has provided a home for animals from around the world. Russell Chaplin is the head elephant keeper. He accompanied the elephants from India to their new home and their new lives. On the morning of loading, all three walked in very well and they were uh, taken to the cargo plane and they were extremely settled. We, uh, we had no problems. The flight was very smooth and they landed here and was put in the yard and we walked them out of the crate straight into the house. So it went very, very well. Asian elephants in India are suffering due to increases in the massive human population and the need for more land to build houses. The staff at Woburn hope to play their small part by highlighting their plight. Chris Webster is the chief executive of the park. Well, we're not going to save the Asian elephant from extinction through a captive breeding program. The gestation rates are too long, the birth rates are too slow, the success rates are still uh, very, very poor. What we want to do, though, is through successful births and captivity, by having some media stars, is to raise people's awareness of the problems facing the Asian elephant. Asian elephants have a number of features that set them apart from the African species. They're not as big as their African cousins and their ears are much smaller and straighter. It's hoped that in the future the three new residents at Woburn will have calves despite the problems of the past. The history of captive breeding of, of these animals has been abysmal over the last hundred years. Three successful, four successful births maybe. Uh, but Zoos are now getting their acts together. We are working more closely with each other, putting the welfare of the animal before the welfare of the actual collection con concerned. Um, but we feel that by setting up uh, a, a settled group who have got long-term security with a good staff team, a young bull and two cows, that we're going to be best placed to have successful births when they become mature in about eight to ten years' time. The facilities at Woburn are very different to life in India, but Chandrika, Damini and Raja are certainly very comfortable and look set for a relaxed life. We have good facilities for them. We have a nice heated house so um, we can keep warm if it gets to, too severe. And uh, we have a large paddock and we have 250 acres of fire park to walk around. And they uh, integrate very well. Uh, they form strong bonds and with a male here, uh, in the future we hope that we can have uh, cars running around to Woburn Safari Park. Thanks to Woburn Safari Park, these Asian elephants now have a safe and happy life ahead of them. After the break, Animal Allies get some handy hints on healing a pet. And Karen's surgeons anxiously wait for signs of recovery.
Reiki is a hands-on complementary healing technique that's been used by humans alongside traditional and Western medicine for centuries. However, pet lovers are now using Reiki on animals as well. Animal Allies Alternative Guide to Healing a Pet. Margaret Coates is a complementary healer and uses Reiki alongside traditional veterinary care to treat animals for a range of ailments. Today she's treating Old Boy, a 12-year-old collie who's suffering from arthritis. We would treat um, anywhere where there's been a change in the household, any injury to an animal, obviously after the vet's treated it or alongside the veterinary care, any disease or disorder, really anything we can think of. We need to be thinking on the emotional level as well as the physical, so any problems whatsoever. Performing Reiki is simple and can be done at home on most animals, depending on how cooperative they are. Place the hands gently on the animal's chakras, which is a special term for their centres of energy. The chakras can usually be found on the chest and between the shoulders. Move the hands slowly across the body until the animal responds. All the boys just reacting now, saying, well, that's a very nice sensation, but I can feel something. I can feel something tingly, something a little bit peculiar. Performing this type of healing should take 15 minutes a day, and Margaret believes the rewards could be immediate for both the animal and its owner. Healing helps every type of animal. It strengthens the bond between humans and animals, so don't wait until they're ill. Do it anyway, just because you love them, because you want them to experience the best in life, to feel the highest possible level of love. Know an animal in need of some alternative healing? Check out this week's Animal Allies How-To. Gently place hands on the animal's chakras. Repeat all over the body. Perform healing on a daily basis. And remember, if an animal is sick or injured, always consult a vet first. A team of conservationists from Turkey's Institute of Marine Science are looking for monk seals, the rarest seals in the world. They're surveying a 200 kilometer long protected area on the Cilician coast of southern Turkey, where development and fishing is forbidden. But finding one of Turkey's tiny monk seal population won't be easy. They suspect the shy creatures are hiding away in an underwater cave. By filming and studying the creatures' behavioural patterns, the team hope to prevent them from dying out. Once, thousands of monk seals swam in the Mediterranean. They could even be found frolicking in the Bosphorus, which runs through Istanbul. But now they're only safe in protected areas like this one. Nirgis Yazgan from the Society for the Protection of Nature explains. It's uh, not only a major step, it's a must, uh, we believe, when you are talking about such endangered numbers, uh, such reduced numbers like 50, 60. Uh, it's absolutely essential that uh, habitat protection is given and that it's given with the maximum impact, uh, with the maximum precautions taken. Pollution is one of the major factors that's killing off the seals. Fishing is another huge problem. If they're not caught in trawling nets, local fishermen may attack them. This conservationist has found a monk seal which was shot by one of them. The fisherman claimed the seal broke into his net to eat the fish inside. For the monk seal, it would have been a tempting and easy catch. But the fisherman was unforgiving and killed the rare seal. It's not the first time the conservationists have seen this tragedy, but it's disheartening nevertheless. The team can only fight back by ensuring fishermen don't illegally enter the protected areas. These barbed trawl traps will catch and tear a fisherman's net. The students also tell fishermen about the seals and their place in the marine food chain. Outreach projects are particularly important in Turkey, where environmental consciousness is low. And they're working. In the last few years, the team has found dozens of new recruits to help them in their work. 
Dr. Ali Cemal Guju is the team leader. What's happening to the Mediterranean Monk Seal here in Turkey is symbolic to the threats facing Mediterranean because the reasons are not specific to the species and not unique to the region. So our attempts to protect this animal can be and should be uh, taken as a model by the other governments of the Mediterranean in order to protect marine life. But the protected areas only cover a small part of the Turkish coast. Elsewhere, new luxury developments are being built, driving the seals away. And building work for these multi-storey creations is bringing more raw materials, more workers and more rubbish and pollution into the waters nearby. Ali says establishing more seal sanctuaries is the only hope. The current situation of Mediterranean monk seal is really bad. There are only 300 individuals left in the Mediterranean. So we are very thankful for the financial support of the members of WWF Belgium so that we could continue our attempts to protect this endangered species. With the support of the World Wildlife Fund and the Turkish government, Ali's team have helped around 60 seals. But there is still a great deal more to do to save these beautiful creatures. Karen's operation is over, but now comes the most difficult moment, her recovery process. Cardiothoracic specialist Dr. Jolene Crete feels the operation has been a success. Animals usually do pretty well uh, in recovering and uh, she'll limit herself in terms of, I don't know, hanging from the trees or whatever if her incision hurts a little bit. Um, and I think long term she should do fine. The hole is closed, the heart's fixed and she should be normal. She's dressed in a new pair of pajamas to keep her warm. While in surgery, Karen's body temperature was taken down to 30 degrees, and now they have to warm her up to the normal 37 degrees. Once she's a little more stable, Karen is taken to the post-operative intensive care unit. A few days later and Karen has moved to the ICU ward. She's up and happy and eating her food again. Dr. Mark Greenberg is overseeing her post-operative care. This is like one of the greatest thrills. Uh, you know, we took a patient who was critically ill pretty much on the, you know, on the verge of not making it and who succeeded in you know, weaning her off a respirator. This is a little special in that we had to create our own ICU environment from nothing. All volunteer effort is just incredible. She's pretty much out of the woods now. Uh, we plan to give her you know, a low amount of oxygen until she doesn't need it. Karen's scar has already begun to heal, and the medical team is very happy about her progress. Now she's off the critical list, Karen's favorite keeper, Gail Fordham, can also assist with her recovery. She really likes being held. That's like the biggest bonus out of this whole affair for her, I think. <laughs> she's, it's like a dream come true for her to get held all the time. She still has a, a, f a few problems that are a result of being on a ventilator for two weeks and uh, from re re recovering from her surgery. Uh, she's, she's very weak still and has to get strength. Um, there shouldn't be a problem with any of those things really with her eating now. She's very interested in interacting. She's fully recovered from all the sedation she's had. Uh, so just given time, I think all those things will will uh, take care of themselves. Karen 
Ron's successful operation was only possible because of several surgeons and over a hundred volunteers. Was all this effort worth saving the baby who would have succumbed to her illness in the wild? After it's all done, I think it's easy to say yes. Uh, there, there was a lot, uh, a lot of people's time involved and a lot of, uh, a lot of money expended to, to pull her through. And, um, but she is an endangered species. She represents a group of animals that, that um, have a, a questionable future. And, and to be able to put some effort into one animal, I think will, will help that group and it will certainly bring some attention to their, to their needs too. The new world of animal allies continues in the next series with a close look at Madagascar's incredible lemurs. And in the British countryside, the local vets have a full surgery to contend with. While off the Australian coast, animal helpers try and preserve a secret whale sanctuary. How To looks at the best ways to have the world's most obedient pet. And in the middle of the Brazilian rainforest, several species of monkeys are just hanging on.